Hey guys, Alta Beast Pelzer here, your voice manager. I unmute the voice of women who are ready to speak up about what has kept her silent for way too long. Listen, if you have missed any of the episodes from the Power of Why series, I need you to take some time and go back, jot down some notes, take action. Why? Because guess what? Man, they dropped gems each and every episode. And this episode is no different. I'm excited about it. Why? Because you guys know that you've been listening to the Speak Easy podcast. You know, every once and again, I'll try to like sing a little piece of a song. And, you know, I don't do it long because I don't want to hurt your ears. But (laughs) my guest that is on today uh, is not only someone that can hold the note a whole lot better than I can, but we're going to talk about how, you know, it correlates with that whole power of why when it comes to you sometimes need some a little extra help, a little somebody to guide you along the way in order for you to reach your highest potential. So with that being said, Hi, Benny. How are you? Hello, LTV. Doing crazy. How oh, are my you? goodness. So I'm excited to have you on as a guest today. I'm looking forward to this conversation. Benny, let the Speak Easy podcast listeners know a little bit about yourself, and then we'll dive into today's topic. Yeah, my, my name is Benny. I'm a rock vocalist. I'm a songwriter, and I'm also a singing teacher. I've been teaching singing lessons since 2011. And I have four university degrees in music, including one from the Sydney Conservatorium of Music. And I run a singing school in Sydney. I, in 2019, uh, September, I started an online business called uh, topsingingsecrets.com. And I released my first uh, offer, which is called the Singing Confidence Academy. My mission is to turn closet singers into confidence singers. Because throughout my years of teaching, I've, um, I say most of my students, they were beginner singers. And when they come to me, they, they, they tell me um, all these stories that are different, but has a similar theme, um, which is their anxious to sing in front of people or people telling them that they're not good singers uh, from early on and then uh, up to the age of maybe 60s uh, they started they, they thought okay if I don't do this now uh, it's going to be too late and uh, and so that's really sad so I want to I want to help people to, uh, to to overcome that oh my goodness so I'm I'm happy that you started there because when we think about our why a lot of times there are you know, we get to a point where we say, you know, no, I don't think I can, I'm capable of doing this, or I've waited too long. You know, I see other people doing it at a younger age and they're excelling at it. And then you go, you know, what can I really do with it? And when we think about the singing piece, man, yes, there are so many people that are, we have little, little kids that are singing and, you know, coming out with CDs and all types of other stuff. But I think it's really significant for us to understand that sometimes when we tap into the power of why, and when we tap into our why, the same way when we tap into that love or that that passion for singing, it's never too late. Absolutely. Yeah, there's no deadline on it. It's you go for it because not only is it going to do you some good, but there's some good that you can do for someone else. Now, I know that we had talked about a little bit before we started about how, you know, there's some people that they are naturally gifted when it comes to singing. And then there's others that you're like, no, we, you need some work, you need some help. And you stated that you were a part of that second group. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, well, um, I've, I've I've always enjoyed listening and and singing. Um, I guess my first memory would be singing along to a Lion King soundtrack when it first came out, <laughs> right? And um, my 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 family has always been supportive of me uh, of my singing, um, but it's it's just it's never something that came easily to me um, because, well, I, I have this theory, right? 
um, the natural uh, gifted singers, they're, they're usually lower voices because they have a bigger instrument. So their, their vocal folds are thicker. So it's easily, it's, it's more easy, uh, easier for them to, to make the sound that they want or, or, or to get a bigger sound, or louder sound, or even to sing in tune. So when I teach uh, students uh, who have lower voices, they, they rarely sing out of tune. Whereas the higher voices like myself, um, we tend to sing uh, flat sometimes because our, our vocal folds are thinner than the lower voices. So that makes it um, a little bit harder for, for us to learn to use it. Um, that's not to say that high voices are not naturally gifted singers, but just from my experience of working with uh, beginners, that's what I found. And um, yeah, so I, uh, I, I, I belong in that second group and I needed a lot of help. Um, I, I'm, I'm also someone who needs a lot of details um, for me to understand something and to to know why I'm, 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 I'm doing something. And uh, it's just that information just wasn't available to me um, when I started uh, or wanted to learn how to sing. So uh, it, I went through a, a, a process of research and experimentation. And, um, and eventually I, I um, filled in the holes or gaps in my foundation and, and I figured out how to use my voice. That's powerful because even when we think about, you know, that process of our why, yeah, there's moments where I think about this journey that I've been on in business. And it's like, I didn't expect it to be where, (laughs) you know, where it's gotten me. I didn't expect to be uh, on stages. I didn't expect to do a podcast or publish books because initially it was just, I just wanted to get it done. You know, it's like, I, I, let me get it done. And then as you're going through that process, you want to learn a little bit more. You, you find out something and you're like, oh, let me do the research for that. Oh, let me, you know, let me try this product. Oh, let me go in, you know, see what that's about. And it opens up your whole mindset to other opportunities. It opens up your creativity. Um, I think that's one of the the greatest things for us as creatives in so many different industries across the world is that when you tap into the information, the wisdom, the experiences of other people and you apply it to what you're doing, the opportunities just open up before you. Absolutely, I'm 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 a, I'm a big believer in uh, being done uh, is better than uh, being perfect, right? I mean, get, getting it done is being better than uh, getting it to be perfect. Uh, and as you as you go along, yeah, you can fine tune um, the things that you're doing. And uh, this this ties in really well with uh, a, a situation that I encounter a lot um, with my students. So a lot of my students they're they're really anxious, even. Even it's just one 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 setting singing in front of me, so I I, I always say to them that um, singing uh, is like um, playing a guitar, okay? So um, so if you're a guitarist, you you know that your guitar is um, they, they they go out of tune from time to time, okay? And uh, the only way that you can tune them the strings uh, um, is to play them over and over, and they will sound bad. Um, for for a while, um, but but you need to play the strings in order to know whether uh, which way to to turn the tuning pegs to know whether the sh- the strings are sharp or flat. So uh, they will sound bad for a while, but that's the only way for for you to make it sound good again. So the, the, it's the same thing with your voice. If you look at your voice as an instrument, um, then uh, you you can learn to to play it. So if your voice is healthy and it's not sore or hoarse, then you can learn to play your voice. And um, the only way for you to make your, uh, to, to know how to get the, yourself to sound good is to um, sound bad for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I 
understand completely. My uh, my oldest daughter at one point was learning to play the guitar, and first of all, I never knew that you had to tune a guitar. And as they've gone through the many different instruments that they've learned how to play, uh, having to tune all of them, it's been an interesting experience for me. But uh, that process is kind of like, you're like, wow, okay, because you have to sit there. You, you want it to be a quiet environment, you know, so that way you can go ahead and focus. But what I didn't realize was that sometimes what we hear and what we think is okay is not in tune. And so as they were tuning it, and I'm like, you sure that's right? Is that okay? I, that sounded okay. And they're like, no, mom, look, see? And I'm, <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, okay. So I'm just going to sit over here. And they're like, you know, tuning it. And, but when it's in tune, oh man, it just makes such a beautiful sound. Exactly, and, uh, and it's it's a it's uh, it's the same with the voice, but it's even harder with the voice because you don't hear yourself as how other people hear you. You hear yourself through uh, vibrations in your skull, you know, the conduction, and a little bit uh, of your sound uh, coming from your mouth to your ears. But for everybody else, they hear you as you know the sound coming from your mouth into their ears. So that's why I sound good to me <laughs> in the shower and to everyone else. I probably sound like a dying cat. Is that what you're saying to me, Penny? Oh, I've, I've never heard you sing before. So. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely can understand that, though. Uh, yeah, as I have um, children who are who have done musicals and things of uh, man, it's definitely put you in a, a, a different perspective. It, uh, you hear songs over and over again. You hear them practicing. You hear them making sure they have the right, you know, the right sound. You them making sure that they can harmonize with the other. It's a lot. And, you know, I applaud you for what you do because you have to listen to the same notes over and over and over again. At first, it, it, it can be tedious, but um, uh, you, you'll get to a level <clears throat> where um, it starts to become a new experience every time you perform it. So um, sometimes you, you, you want to learn, you know, your, your favorite song. And uh, in, the, in the beginning, uh, you start to get tired of it by drilling it over and over. Um, and it starts to not become your favorite song anymore. And then once you get to a stage where you've mastered all the elements in the song, and so like the, the lyrics, the melody, rhythm, and, and you're able to um, uh, put emotions into it and making it, uh, you know, a bit louder in this spot, uh, a bit softer in this spot, uh, you, you, it will, you will start to flow through you, the song. And, uh, and at that stage, it will feel like every time you perform the song, it's like you're trying to get this message across instead of, you know, thinking about, you know, am I in tune here? <laughs> am I sounding all right here and there? So you put in the work ahead of time, and then at some point it becomes a little bit easier. <laughs> yeah, it becomes a part of you, really. It becomes a part of your muscle memory. So it's, it, it will be, be there when you, when, you want it, uh, when you want to do something, you, you, you would just know how to do it, just like driving, right? Exactly. Oh, my goodness. Speak easy podcast listeners. So I know some of you are like, wow, I didn't I never, you know, put those two together when I thought about why and, you know, think about singing. But you can definitely see the correlation between the two. And listen, it, it, it's a lot, you know, as a business owner this year, some of you may have felt that this year made you out of tune completely 
everything that's going on, it's not what you planned. It's not what you had on your vision board. But now you're looking at it and going, how do I get back to that place? How do I get back to that space? And so Benny shared some great things that, listen, you got to figure out what that's going to be for you to get you back in tune. And I think a very valuable thing that Benny said as well is that this is what he does. And at moments, it's going to feel like, ugh, I'm tired of this. But at some point, you fall back in love with it. And that's the purpose of having someone that you can reach out to. That's the purpose of having somebody that can coach you is because, you know, it, when it gets to that point of you feeling like I am ready to just throw in the towel and give up, that person is there. The same way that you heard Benny, like he, they're there to give you that support and say, well, it's it's hard right now, but you can definitely move past this. So I, I appreciate that um, above and beyond. Now, when it comes to your why, how has your why really impacted your business? So my my why is um, I I want to serve my my customers or my clients or my students. So that's that's the mindset that I have. Uh, it's 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 something that's been instilled in, in, in me by by my mentor. Uh, his name is Michael Elsner from Master Music Licensing, and he was the one who helped me build my business from scratch. And um, by having that serving mindset, so being of service to your customers, it, it, it's actually, uh, it, it makes the whole uh, process a lot more fulfilling and rewarding. So as I said uh, at the beginning, uh, my, my mission is to turn closet singers into confident singers. So by closet singers, I mean, you know, people who only sing in the shower or in their bedroom <laughs> and uh, into possibly someone who could uh, sing in front of, uh, even, even if just in front of friends and family uh, at, at the campfire, right? So I, by, um, I can speak from, uh, through, the, uh, through the experience of uh, working with my students in private lesson settings, when when I show my students um, the open throat concept, which is a foundation of um, my my syllabus, if uh, if you will, they manage to well first un- understand how the instrument worked, and then building the muscle memory for the specific vocal technique, um, and then using imagery to trigger those uh, techniques or uh, muscle memory, so that they can uh, make those techniques second nature and that's what uh, will make them uh, sing confidently in front of people and every time I show them a new part of the concept and and they <clears throat> and they start, start to apply it to to their singing I, I see a, a, a light on their face you know that aha moment and that's what makes it so rewarding and I plan each of my lessons for them uh, so that it suits their progress and uh, and, and then goes and by giving them more value you're you're actually getting more value out of it as well that's what I find by you know um, helping them to achieve their goals you it's, it's a very gratifying feeling I have to agree with you there I, that leading with service is so valuable and so important I think now more than ever because that that's what we need uh, like we need people that have no no hidden agendas. We need people that are just you know there just to serve and to 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 want to see us do better. You know to want to see each individual person do better than you know. I want you to leave me better than you came. And if I can do that, then I've done something amazing. And if I can just do that one time for one person then that can completely shift every person that that person comes in contact with. And so it's, it's valuable because even when we think about the singing piece of it, someone who learns how to manage their voice and how to use it at, at a much greater capacity, 
look at where they can go with that. Look mm-hmm. at, you know, it may not be that they ever put out a CD, but they may be someone who goes to a nursing home and sings to the elderly. They may be someone who goes and teaches at a school so that way young kids can start learning how to use their voice. And it's just like you you just impact that one life and man, it can change the trajectory of so many other lives just from that one. So I absolutely love that. Speak Easy Podcast listeners, this has been a phenomenal, phenomenal episode. Um, I want you to make sure that you took notes, go back, listen in, and then join the conversation, B-I-T, dot L-Y forward slash World Voice Community. We want to make sure we hear from you and you tell us how this episode resonated with you, or you can leave a review on your favorite podcasting platform. With that being said, Benny, let them know how they can reach you and where they can find you at online. Yes. So I have um, a special singing confidence training package for you. That It comes with an ebook and a training video that will help you to sing higher than ever before in just five minutes. I know it's a bold promise, but I have seen it happen time and time and again with my private students. So um, if you don't believe it, you can try it and see how you go. So you can go to topsingingsecrets.com. Okay, so y'all, so if I come back singing better, you'll know why. (laughs) You'll know why immediately. You'll be like, it was because of that episode she had with Benny that now she's coming back and she's thinking that she can out sing Beyonce. It, it's it's all because of Benny. It was <laughs> it was all because of Benny. That it was all Benny's doing. So <laughs> I thank you so much for joining me today. Speak Easy Podcast listeners, we appreciate you guys and we want to see you elevate in life and in business because guess what? That is what the hashtag Speak Easy Podcast is all about. With that being said, I appreciate you guys. I am your host, Altavis Pelzer. And until next time, don't forget to press it out. See ya.